folks, this is Kevin Snyder. I am excited to introduce you all to Miss Deborah Gardner. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Deborah Gardner is a uh, professional speaker, and she's somebody that we can learn a lot from, not just about speaking, but also about the speaking industry. So we're in for a treat today to, to kind of glean a little bit about her background, her experience, but also some of her crystal ball forecasting for the future. All right. But before we do that, um, why are we wearing these white shirts, Deborah? What? <laughs> if we can show them off, stay safe and turn around. Okay, we'll do that. Six feet apart. Six feet apart. Yes. Isn't that the main message that is worldwide right now? So that's yeah. pretty much what we wanted to uh, display. The, the reason why this all came about was um, as close as I'm to the hospitality industry, well, going on 30 years, um, they call me the triple threat. I have meeting um, and event planner experience. Um, I've been a supplier in the hotel side and now I'm a speaker. And uh, following my hospitality peeps, uh, you know, about 40,000 of them, but of course we know there's a lot more out there. Um, it's been a tough time. It's been a really, really tough time uh, going through what we've been going through this uh, Corona uh, uh, situation. And, and so following them, they've been talking about, you know, what are they doing with their time, um, how they're dealing with all this. And a lot of them have actually been giving back and contributing uh, their time. And one area that they've been doing is they've been actually making masks for healthcare providers in need. And so my company and I thought, well, how do we help them? Because as they're making these masks, you know, it might not cost much, but how are they paying for that? So we came up with the idea of the t-shirts. And we thought, why don't we get the message of be safe and, and keep back six feet out there? And yeah. whoever you know, purchased the t-shirts, like you did, um, all the proceeds go to them. So I have a laundry list of hospitality uh, from the front line to the back of the house that are making these masks. And so it's been really fun writing out these checks to these people so they can continue to uh, to make the mass. And so it's been, it's becoming very popular. And you can tell you've got one style, I've got one style. Um, I even have, <laughs> I even have this one, which um, keep calm, oh. keep your mask on, which is my, my little puppy with his mask on. I mean, the printing company that actually did this, it was, you know, support the local. I found out wanted to keep her doors open and keep her employees uh, working. And so she and I got together. It's Arizona uh, Screen Print out of Glendale, Arizona, and a woman owned business. And uh, we've been working together. She just gives the, uh, the t shirts it cost, and we've been sending them out everywhere. We've been sending them to you know, the White House, to the governors, um, wow. and, and now the, the media is starting to pick up on it. So, and, and it's good because a lot of people are having a hard time saying, you know, stay back six feet. Well, this helps communicate and advocate for that. So tell us real quick before we move on from the shirt, where can people get one? Oh, yes. Um, actually, it's really easy. They just have to go to www, of course, uh, staysafetshirts.com or t-shirt, oh. safe t-shirts.com. Um, and again, the it's just a quick, simple link. Um, we are selling the shirts, not only in the US, but Canada right now, because we've had some Canadian uh, interest and uh, we're hoping to hope open up to other countries as well. But the beauty of it is um, there's a lot of companies out there that are making masks and ventilators and everything, but are getting kickbacks and making money off of it. We are not. We are totally with the hospitality industry to help contribute. And this is a way we're contributing by all the proceeds. So at the same time, everybody is helping along the way. So why not join us? Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll include the link in the description oh, great. in this video so that folks have that direct access, oh, not just you. not only to staysafetshirts.com, but also 
DeborahGardner.com. Hey, why not? Why not? But um, yeah, I, I know that there's a lot of um, emerging speakers out there and a lot of speakers out there probably trying to wonder what is going on. And, and right. um, as you know, as a trend center in the hospitality industry, um, it has been the most roller coaster ride uh, situation that we've been in before. And, and it's interesting because being in the meetings industry, this is not our first rodeo. This is just a different animal, <laughs> what we're going through. This is a, this is a beast. Uh, I've never seen anyone or any uh, industry impacted like this before. And the thing about, I'd love to say too, especially to the emerging speaker, emerging uh, speakers is that um, you're not even in the speaking business, you're in the meetings business. And what happens in the meeting business follows the economy. So that's why it's really important to stay up with what is going on globally, uh, staying in touch with the news, reading the Wall Street Journal, um, getting, you know, being involved with local organizations that have to do with meetings and events and, and, and the economy. It, it's a hand in hand situation. So whatever goes on with the economy and the meetings industry is what's going to go on in the speaking industry. So that's why it's important to stay up with the trends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and some real quick back end. Um, I first was introduced to you because I, I, I saw you speak at an MPI meeting, which is Meeting Professionals International. And I believe you're speaking in North Carolina, which is where yep. I, I live. And I had heard of you. Okay. So I thought, well, why don't I watch this amazing speaker? And that's a, always something I recommend to folks is have, have a, a short list of speakers that, that are doing it that you can model kind of after, uh, or at least observe. And I knew that when I watched you, and I don't do this with all speakers, but um, I was like, I need to, I need to say hello to this person. She now needs to do something <laughs> about Deborah Gardner. So you, you did a great job that day. You crushed it, and and I know that you've also spoken for a variety of, of meeting uh, and or MPI chapters all over the the world, really. So how did you get into that? I mean, you mentioned a little bit earlier that your your background is in hospitality or meeting planning. Kind of get, well, tell us yes. how did you get started. Yes, actually, it, it even goes back farther than that. I'm actually a Marine brat. So as a Marine brat, I have moved all over the world. Um, as a matter of fact, I've recently moved again, and this was considered actually my 30th move in my life. Yeah, and I've got the cleanest closets in town, let me tell you. Um, but with that, thinking that when I was really young, thinking, I've been everywhere. I've traveled everywhere. Well, it wasn't until I actually got into um, the, the, the meetings industry that I thought, wow, there's a lot more people out there traveling than I am. So I figured I had still a lot to learn. And that's exactly what I did. I, I hopped between being in the meetings industry, company-wise, um, independent-wise, to the hotel side, to the restaurant side, um, because the hospitality world is huge. I mean, it's it's there's a lot involved and it even expands out to even the automobile industry. They're part of the hospitality industry. Everybody that services other people, you're in the hospitality industry. And as speakers, um, we're all connected with that as well. And one of the things about speakers though, the perception of speakers to the meetings industry is very important as well. And I think you'd agree with that, Kevin, you know, your ethics, your behavior, your morals, um, have to be very intact uh, because it's all about closing that gap between, you know, your customer and yourself. And what better way than anything that I can stress is it has to do with ethics and behavior. Right. Yeah. Well, people do business with people that they like and people yeah. they, that they hear about. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. It's a referral business. So all it takes, um, Gosh, I, I've, got, I've got stories from other speakers that made some bad decisions at a, maybe at an event, at a late night, at the hotel bar. And yeah. guess what? They had a keynote the next morning where people literally got up and left. Yeah, that can, that can, you know what? A lot of people think, you know, are you the same person on stage as off stage? And you right. need to be that on stage person. All right. You're absolutely right. There's, there's been some very experienced speakers that I've, you know, dealt with that I was shocked. Um, and clients remember that. Absolutely. Clients do. As a matter of fact, clients remember how, what you're doing now. 
in, <laughs> it, you know, during this downtime. Um, they're, 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 they're watching. I wrote an article not too long ago for the uh, NSA National Speaker Association Speaker Magazine and on ethics. And, and one of the things is, is uh, the, the whole thing is big brothers watching you, especially on social media you know, how you act, how you, you know, respond, um, you know, whether politically, religiously, um, you know, opinionated wise, they're watching you. They might not be friends on you, but they can stalk you. And if they're thinking about hiring you in the near future, they're, they're going to, they're going to do their due diligence by, by researching who you are more now than ever. So what you're doing now and, and, and what you're saying out there, you know, social wise, social media wise, be careful because Big Brother is watching. Yeah, no, absolutely, and and that's that's something I struggle with sometimes because I want to maybe make a comment, um, you know, like on social media, and I know you know, stay away from politics, you stay away from religion, and I'm like, yeah, but this just happened, and I can, I want to add my comment, and my wife's like, don't do it. I know. Don't do it. I know. And we've all done it. We've all been attacked by somebody on it. Um, um, yeah. And so maybe that, you know, we just have to really be careful, really be careful because that's where your customers are as well. And right. um, once you get hired, then they're going to want to utilize you and your attendant, the attendees are going to be looking at your feed and if they see something down the line, I mean, it's, it could be a snowball effect. <laughs> Absolutely. It really Absolutely. could be. So, um, so I really highly recommend rule number one, you really have to watch your, your ethics and your behavior in the industry. Right. But it's an exciting industry, something new and different every day. And this is the time to really up your game and prepare for when everything turns around, because once they do, they're going to want you. They're going to, they're, they're relying on you. And one of the things they're going to be relying on you right now is that you stay healthy and you stay very, you know, open-minded to what is going on. And they want you to take care of you because when they need you, whether it's on stage or virtually, um, you got to be ready. Right. You got to be ready. Well, let's, let's talk about that. Um, where do you kind of see the next, I mean, here we are, it is uh, mid-May. Uh, so we're in the midst of, of, of COVID and, and I mean, what are you kind of, Give us kind of a, a prediction, not a, or you know what I mean, Yeah. about fall 2020 and maybe even 2021. Where do you kind of see things shifting? Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked because it's changing every day. It is so hard to keep up with what is going on. Usually I can have a, a good handle on it, but um, every day is a different day. But what came out this morning, just to be relevant on your show right now, um, BNT News came out where I follow quite a bit is the, the fact that they had about over, I think 500 or 600 uh, meeting event professionals uh, surveyed saying that as of April 6th, they were looking to see that the fall was gonna look better. I think it was, I think it was like 8% um, better than what, what has been going on. Well, now um, it's being pushed into 2021 and, and they're saying like 38% are feeling that way. But a lot of them also are saying even later, they, they think that this is going to have an effect all the way into 20, you know, 22. Um, sad to say, and the reason why this is happening is a lot of our customers right now um, have been furloughed or laid off um, or have lost their job completely. Then there's another set of about maybe at 50% that are still working. And the reason why they're still working is they're still negotiating contracts. They're still postponing events. I mean, this is still going on. The sad part about that is once those negotiations are done, they're going to lose their job. So there's still that trickling effect happening. And then when it is time to rehire, which will happen probably by the end of this year, rehire, the companies are going to be in the driver's seat because everybody in the meetings industry is going to want jobs back. So their resumes are going to have to be spot on. Their reskilling um, that they're doing, you know, dealing with right now by, you know, being on Zoom calls and learning like yours. Um, is going to be important too, because they're going to have to sell themselves uh, going back into, 
getting rehired somewhere with what other company and organizations out there. But I've never seen so many stakeholders, owners, and investors working it <laughs> than ever before, being so involved than ever before, because consulting the many of them and having to help them make these decisions on these furloughs and, and layoffs have been just exhausting for me. But right now they've got a handle on it and they know what to do, um, but it, it's still a trickling effect. And we're still going to see people losing their jobs in the meetings industry. So I, I really don't see things moving as quickly as we want them to. But 2021, 2022, it's, it's still going to be in progress. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you see the events that they're planning also shifting when they do come back? Uh, is it talk about what those meetings would look like come that time? Absolutely. Absolutely. The live events is where they want it to be. Uh, there's no doubt the hospitality industry is all about face-to-face. -face. You and I know that. Um, so live events is going to be their first focus. How that's going to look is going to be completely different. Um, it's going to be interesting because, you know, rounds of 10 are now going to be rounds of four. Um, people are going to have to come in, you know, being tested on their forehead and sanitations everywhere. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, I mean, you know, that six feet apart, everybody's going to be wearing these t-shirts <laughs> just to get the message across. Um, there's a lot of safety and uh, requirements that are going to become standard guidelines for attendees. If um, somebody is sick, by all means, they're going to be turned away and they're going to have to go back home. So that's going to be a, an interesting process. And companies and organizations, the meetings industry are working really hard right now to put those in place. The other factor, of course, we know virtual meetings are going to be very popular as well. Not as popular, but popular. And um, as an alternative or a spinoff to their conference um, or meeting it is going to take play a part as well. And the, the challenge there, though, is, is going to be their biggest competition, and that is keeping attendees' attention. There's so much distraction out there in the world, um, and it's a matter of trying to get them to be mandated type of, of meetings is, is what they're working on right now. Maybe it's, you know, the CEUs or, or uh, requirements before coming to a conference. Uh, we're not sure how that's going to look, but hand in hand, at least the virtual meetings side of things um, is another alternative. Well, it sounds like you and I need to schedule a part two. And a part three. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a lot of information. Um, but I don't want the, you know, the, the newly experienced speakers to be discouraged whatsoever. This is a fabulous industry uh, profession. Um, it's, it, it's, there's so much creativity involved. There's so much networking and great people like yourself um, to learn from and to, uh, to stay you know, in touch with. Uh, but uh, there, it, it's an amazing industry or profession for us to be in. Well, I'm glad that you and I are talking today because I agree with you. Yeah. And it's also nice to hear it from other people to affirm it. Because, <sighs> there, you know, there are some, there's, there have been some tough days. I, I think for me about, um, about, a, about a month ago is when reality hit. Uh, you know, I, I was hopeful. I was optimistic. But it, I said to myself, fall, fall is, the bounce back is not going to come that soon. At least that's what I was starting to recognize. So then my, my uh, evolution to more of a virtual delivery and acceptance of that, I just said, okay, pull my big boy pants up. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Yep. And I've already had some speaking engagements and they're all, you know, <sighs> they're all virtual. So, um, you know, and, and, and the whole how do you set your fee and all that in the virtual and how do you do it? I mean, with polling, Q&A, chat, uh, screen share. I mean, there's so many different ways of doing it as well. Right. It, we are being put to the test. And, and yeah. now that we've gotten the fear factor out of the way from what has been going on, now it's time to put things into action. And that's exactly what you're doing because uh, we're all in it together. We've all been through it. Um, but now it's time like, okay, now what are you doing? what are you doing exactly what are you doing i was listening to uh jim Rowe. i don't know if you know him or not but he um he was he was talking about you know as many times as we sit on the couch watching tv 
you can, in a year, if you get away from the TV, you can make about 10 to, or 12 to $15,000 more just by staying away from the TV and doing wow. something. So it's a matter of really like, you know, mentally, mentally, it's like, okay, what is your, your goal for the day? What is that list? Um, so I think everybody's there now. Everybody's like, okay, we got the fear factor out of the way. Let's put it into action and let's get ready for the recovery. There we go. Exactly. Well, and I've told folks that are aspiring and emerging. I mean, they're, they're folks that are passionate about building their business. So now is actually an ideal time to work yes. on your business so that yes. you will be busy in your business yes. when the rebound has taken effect. And yes. by the way, we could be amidst the rebound right now. We don't even realize it if you position yourself for virtual. Right. Very true. And it's nice so, to have all those options. Exactly. That's what the customers are going to be looking for. So yeah. get on, you know, get on Zoom, get into groups, you know, learn from other people. Don't just sit in your office, your virtual office by yourself, you know, network, watch and study other people of what they're doing um, and keep learning because this is what, this is what's going to, you know, I mean, we know this is what's going to be a need. So why not get off that couch, turn that TV off and get busy. <laughs> yeah and even for folks that let's say that they aren't necessarily watching tv i mean they're out there but it's like well what do i do and right one right. of my suggestions to folks is hey uh if you're a problem solver if you're a speaker right and you want to help people well don't you think a lot of people now need help yeah right. i mean now is a perfect time i think what you said uh, bef i don't know if you said this before we were recording or not but you said um you know, now is a great time to stay visible or be visible so that people will remember you. Sure. Right? Sure. Absolutely. Um, and that could be on social media. Um, I mean, I just, I just completed my new brand new website, debragardner.com and, and there's no customers to sell to, but I'm out there on social media going, Hey, check out my, my new website. Um, because you don't want to sell to your customers right now, but you want to still connect and there's nothing better than just, you know, saying hello to them. Um, they love that. They're going to remember that or, you know, getting on their social media feed to, to, you know, give them a nice quote, um, an inspiring quote for the day or um, come up. You can come up with something. It's just a matter of what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you putting into action today? What's your goal? Even if it's just one thing accomplish it. You will feel much better. You're, you know, it's a matter of getting your confidence back up, getting yourself back up on that stage. In other words. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, help us that like with your specific uh, content as a speaker, Deborah, what, what was one of your, or what is one of your main topics that you focus on? Um, whether it's virtual or on site, is there a certain niche or, or a, a lane that you've gone down? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, I'm very well known for accelerating the fast lane. And that comes from being a competitive swimmer. And um, I, I'm all about, you know, how do we deal with being in the fast lane? You know, sometimes you need to be in the middle lane, sometimes you need to be in the slow lane, sometimes you need to exit and, and, and reevaluate. But I'm all about. Uh, keeping everybody in the fast lane because that's what we're in <laughs> technology wise life wise world wise um, we're all in the fast lane uh, so um, I'm I, I enjoy you know going a little bit deeper into you know negotiation sales leadership um, and especially the trends I really enjoy uh, sharing what's going on in the trends uh, that have to affect each and every industry out there. But, uh, but I do specialize in the hospitality industry because we have to, we have to stay with what we know. You know, I, I learned a great quote from one of my mentors, uh, Simon T. Bailey, who used to work for Disney before he became a very well-known speaker. And he said, um, he said, one of the biggest mistakes I made in the speaking industry is that I got away from what I know. And when he said that, I thought, wow, why am I going out to try to get into other industries like the financial industry, the healthcare industry, um, the students um, ar arena? Why aren't I staying in the hospitality industry? And he was right. So when I went back to 
to my roots, um, to what I know, uh, my business has exploded. My business completely exploded. And so I believe that it's important for you to, as a newly experienced emerging speaker, to really start with your roots. And then you're gonna be able to be able to expand out and be well known as you expand out. Uh, don't do what I did. I, I started in this whole different arena and it was a big mistake on my part too. So I'm glad, you know, Simon said that so that I was able to pull myself back and, um, and start, you know, from what I already know. And what if somebody doesn't have uh, that to start with? Maybe they, like, I talked to a lot of folks and they're, they're working in corporate world and they say, you know, when I ask who's your ideal target audience, they say, corporate groups like they're kind of, they're kind of like Boof! and i'm like okay well let's let's narrow that you know yeah what if somebody isn't i mean you kind of had hospitality is is what you you know any tips on how someone can can identify what that that niche yeah could be? yeah yeah it's interesting because as i was going through this you know discovery phase of myself um it 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 took someone like a customer to tell me where I'm supposed to be. You have to listen to your customers. Your customers will tell you. And if you ask them, they're, they're, we're so emotionally attached to what we do and how we do it and topics and things like that. But sometimes we just need to listen to what other people have to say. It might be a mentor, but, but customers can be pretty honest. Um, and once I started listening to my customers, like what you know what you know simon t bailey that was a gift that i got it, it really honed me down um to where i'm supposed to be so i think it's a matter of listening and and uh, there's been it depends on you know if you say corporate association nonprofits, um you'll find that fit once you determine you know what your message your true message is what do you feel is your your answer to that yeah, it's tough. I think it's one of the things that a lot of people struggle with. And I always ask myself, how can I best help them get clarity on that? And I think you're right. It's, it's if you get away from doing what you know how to do, um, you know, you're going to start to wonder, well, what, what about this? Or what? A, I think a great speaker is not just a great storyteller, but more importantly, they're a great problem solver. Right. So, yes, if they have a universal, like they, they want to help people learn how to, to take massive action and dream big which kind of is two separate things. Well, any industry needs that, right? Any human being needs that, how to, how to manage and, and motivate yourself and your teams. But, all right, well, where's my expertise though? If I'm going to be the expert and knowing that my expertise can be transferable to a variety of industries, where do I want to start though? And I usually tell folks is, well, what's your background of experience? Right. What makes you, what makes you feel that you're an expert? And right. it's not a judgmental question, right. but I want to hear how they answer that because we'll probably we're probably going to start, you know, we we begin to craft that speech of, that's going to help audiences solve a problem, and then say, well, who do we want to deliver that to? Is going to probably be where they have expertise to begin with, right? And then right. once and once the best speech is a referable speech, and I tell folks if your speech if you're out there speaking, whether you're getting paid or not, and you're not getting referred and you're not getting spinoff business, then something's wrong with the speech. Something needs to be worked on. And that's what I ask myself with, you know, if I don't have a line of people waiting to talk with me after a speech, or if I'm not having emails sent to me after a speech, well, I know that something could have been better with, with me. And I'm just the messenger delivering that speech. So once a speech is becomes that darn good, then it's like, then it opens it up because people will refer and say, hey, well, I saw you speak it here. And my friend mentioned this, or my spouse may, may, may mention your name. Then it becomes, all right, now we're getting asked to speak at these different types of events. But for outreach, at least, especially for aspiring and emerging speakers, I feel like they've got to focus on who their target audience is, yep. knowing that if it, this, when the speech is that good, then it's gonna, they're going to be able to share that with a variety of different people. Yeah, and like you said, it starts with what problem are you able to solve? Yep. You're absolutely right. You have to solve a problem or you have no business. You have no business. <laughs> Comes down to that. No speech. 
<laughs> you wrote that down. You have no, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you really have no bottom line. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's usually from, you know, I go into every speech asking myself how, you know, when I, when I first started with colleges, it was kind of like, I knew those issues. I knew what it was like. I worked in higher education. Um, but you know, when, yeah, when I started doing more corporate stuff and even now when I'm asked to speak for groups that, Hey, I, maybe I don't have a lot of experience in that sector. Um, I, I still, I talk with the client. Like you said, I asked them, tell me about your industry. Tell me, I haven't completed a questionnaire for me. Even if it's a group I've talked to dozens of times, the group in North Carolina might be completely different than the group out near where you are in Arizona. Right. Well, let them tell me that. Right. Um, right. So, but it's all about, yeah, it's all about the problem knowing and also how I fit in their event. Oh, you, you know? have to interview your client as much as they interview you because your reputation is on the line if that talk is not the perfect fit for them. So everybody's reputation is on the line. So you have to interview your client just as much as they interview you. You've got to make sure that you're the perfect fit. Yeah. So my ultimate say is slow down to speed up. Take one step at a time uh, in this business. Um, you will have, you know, you will make mistakes. You'll, you'll see other speakers make mistakes, but you have to figure out what am I learning from it? What can I learn from it so it doesn't happen again? Or maybe it was a, a purposeful mistake that turned out really well and you want to continue to do it. Right. It's all part of brainstorming. It's all part of uh, discovering yourself. But uh, it's a great profession. It's a great profession. It is. And uh, I know, um, like a lot of people, are going to be looking at different ways of, of, of doing things. But um, I'm hoping the inspiring emerging speakers hang in there because we need them. We need, we need um, everybody Absolutely. to come back stronger and better than ever before. Yeah, there'll be a lot of people, I think, uh, folks that aren't listening to this, who are going to assume that now's not a good time, uh, or that now is just, right. no, 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 granted, I get it, if they've got a family and they need to put food on the table, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, that's yeah. my point. Well, we had this conversation, my husband and I, the other day, I said, you know, looking back a couple of weeks ago, what was going on through my mind? I got to go get a job, <laughs> you know? <laughs> We got, you're right. We got to put some food on the table. And, yeah. um, but you, you got to be careful not to react so quickly, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely something we can, we have to prepare for now because it's going to come back stronger than ever. Yeah. It is. I mean, yeah. these, these, your, these clients are like just ready. I mean, they're ready to go out the gate. It's just <laughs> the economy's not. And that's what we do. We follow the economy and that's why it's important like we said at the beginning, you have to really stay in touch with the economy and how it's, how it's approached because that's what the meetings industry is going to approach their jobs. And there's so many suppliers and vendors and people that make all these events happen, right? That's the thing that hit me. Um, I watched a, a months ago or weeks ago, I watched a friend of mine. They canceled the entire, they told the attendees to stay at home, but they had a huge ballroom with over a thousand people that were supposed to be there. I'm thinking when they canceled the folks coming, but they still had the keynoter and they basically had the four camera shoot doing a virtual keynote for him. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of, well, what happened to the caterer? What about the, comp the convention center staff? Mm -hmm. yeah. What about all the people that were charging for parking? Right. Um, the, the, oh, yeah. the, I mean, just the hotels that these people were going to stay. I'm like thinking, you know, I, I almost look at events as like, it's like a sporting event too. It's like, Hey, when, when we see these events coming back, then things are going to be trickling down now to the people. That, but it, it's, this isn't just, you know, we're not talking about, Hey, it's like some news source that no, this is reality. Right. Right. Um, and everyone's involved. Uh, there, there's so much conversation right now about how food and beverage is going to be served at meetings and events. I mean, obviously buffets are extinct. <laughs> there's not going to be any buffets out there, but, um, there's a lot of talk of, you know, what kind of food is going to be served now. Those that are harder to prepare, you know, are we just going to go back to, you know, meat and potatoes or, or a salad? Um, but that's a big, huge conversation. And how many wait staff are going to be, you know, in the ballroom serving? It's, it's, they can't be just crowded and bumping into each other all the time now. It's, 
six, they got to keep back six feet. Um, but there's so much involved. The bellmen, I think the bellmen are not going to be in existence anymore. You're going to have to carry your own luggage. The front desk is going to go away. You're going to have to check in. I call it the do it yourself economy. I mean, not only do I feel like I'm working at the grocery store, bagging and checking my own groceries out, but now I'm going to be back working in the hotel business because you're going to be checking yourself in before you get there and you're just going to go straight to your room because a lot of things are going to be extinct. You know, pretty soon you're going to be making your own bed in your hotel room. So, um, and it's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of training in something like, you know, a hotel um, beforehand because even the housekeepers are afraid. There was one housekeeper that just came back, a hotel opened up, a housekeeper came back and she quit that same day because she was afraid of, you know, what was in that room <laughs> um, and how to even make a bed, you know, just wearing gloves, I, I guess is just not enough. So there's gonna be some extensive training. And I think everyone needs to respect each and everyone's, you know, process and space um, that's going to be happening because, you know, when you got on a plane, it's like, you know, don't touch my arm, you know, arm area of, of my seat. Well, now what are we going to do? You know, <laughs> I've always wiped them off, but now it's like, they're going to have shields turning seats around. It's like, what are the airlines going to do? And uh, I mean, they're ready for a big, huge layoff going on pretty soon, um, all the way through September. So they're, the, the travel industry, the tourism industry, um, there's a lot of major changes that are going on right now. We just need to respect what those guidelines are going to be and, and help everybody, um, you know, come out of this a winner. Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of speakers that talk about change. I mean, you, I, don't, I don't think you can really have a leadership program without talking about change yeah. in some way. So for all those folks listening out there, if you have anything that you talk about as it relates to change, and growth and opportunity. Well, guess what? You need to be sharing that right now. Right, exactly, right. exactly. And as a matter of fact, I was just um, writing a rough draft of my next blog that is has, and I'll go ahead and share this now, is the one piece of advice that stakeholders and owners and investors of the hospitality industry is sharing with me, with me right now is that when you do get back up on stage, the one advice they said is don't talk about COVID-19. Mm. The topic of change is, is going to be dramatic, just a very popular topic, like you said, but to relay it to COVID-19, people are going to be sick of it. They're going to be tired of it. What people want to do is they want to move on. So how does that change, how does this change affect them in moving forward to be more successful than ever before? Yeah, imagine that event where you've got like a lineup of different you know, breakout presenters and speakers, and then you got, you know, whoever's introducing the main speaker. If everybody talks about, oh. now that we're through COVID, I'm like, oh. 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 yeah, and, I think it's the door. And you might as well leave that up to the comedians, because you know the comedians are going to come out with yeah. material on this. And, and the stakeholders are like, we're up to here already with it. So don't bring it up. We want to move on. So that's going to be in my next blog on my website real soon. So you got the inside scoop on that. <laughs> well, we'll link to that. Um, we'll link to it in the description here. So why don't we do this? Let's let's leave people on a parting note. Stay strong, right? Stay safe. Or, and stay safe. I'm sorry. Back six feet. Practice social distancing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and if you go get that shirt, staysafe.tshirts.com. All the proceeds go to our friends and partners and those amazing folks in the hospitality industry. So. Yes, yes, definitely. And I know there's gonna be some more information on it published on Smart Meetings Magazine in July. So we're not going away. This is definitely something that is just helping, our, like you said, the industry giving back. So if you're interested, by all means, you know, definitely go to the website. And then post your picture on- Yes, hashtag like hashtag. yours. <laughs> Loved your pictures. Thank you so much. Honored. <laughs> I'm, I'm supporting them. I'm also, I want to support you and I'd encourage Aww. everybody else to do that. So thank, thank you, Deborah. You. We'll be in thank touch. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Woohoo!